Hi class, and welcome back to module 2.4 on the benefits of compost. In this module, we're gonna cover compost's role in plant nutrition, as well as its benefits to the soil biota. Let's start with plant nutrients. This chart illustrates the general nutrient composition of various composts when they're finished based on what the starting materials are. As you can see, there's a pretty wide variation Poultry manure, feedlot manure, and dairy manure tend to be very high in nitrogen, especially poultry manure. We can commonly find these products found sold bagged at the local garden centers. If you look at urban yard waste and crop residue, notice that the NPK, and again that stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium values, are somewhat lower than the animal-derived compost materials. That's pretty typical. Plant versus animal sources are gonna give you different values. Most of the nitrogen in these composts is in a bound up form. About 90% of it will not be available to your crops right away. It will be slow release. Mineral nitrogen is about 10% of the content. That's what will be available right away for use by the plants. Compost? can usually provide all the micronutrients that your plants require. Remember, we covered that in a previous module. Plants require these things, and since compost is derived from a lot of plant and animal waste, trace amounts of all those nutrients will be found in your finished compost. Macronutrient supplementation is usually necessary. We think of compost not as a fertilizer, but as a soil amendment for this reason. There's usually not enough nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium to supply all that your crop needs for the entire growing season. However, it is a good baseline supplement to get some of that into the environment right out the gate. Because the nutrients exist in a complex bound state within the compost particles, they're released by microbial degradation, meaning they have to be digested by the little critters that live in the compost and the soil before they can be used by the plant or the crops that you are growing. It's a slow release source of these nutrients for that reason. That living cycle needs to take place before those nutrients are available. And we're gonna talk more about that. It provides nutrients for a longer period of time as a result. Compost is a very slow release source of these nutrients. It's not like putting out a synthetic fertilizer where those things are available for plants to take up right away because they're in a form that plants can take up. Compost also increases the cation exchange capacity of the soil. If you're unfamiliar with that term, you can always go back and listen to our soils lecture in the home gardening course that we have posted a link to. And I'll make sure that link is available at the conclusion of this. This increases the soil's ability to retain nutrients and prevent nutrient leaching away. So if we think about soil as an electrically charged entity, which it is, the cation exchange capacity refers to the soil and the compost ability to keep those things where they need to be in the root zone so they don't percolate down further into the soil profile or wash away with the rain or when you water. Let's talk about the soil biota next. This is an extremely complex topic. There's a whole world of living creatures in our compost and in our soils. Pretty much a zoo. It's very diverse. <laughs> the soil biota consists of the microorganisms, which include bacteria, fungi, algae, things like that, as well as animals that live in the soil and the compost. Those are our macroorganisms. Those can be things like nematodes, springtails, roly-polies, or sow beetles centipedes, those things live in there and they're all a part of the soil. They make up a big component of the soil and that's why we say the soil is alive. The fact that compost contains a lot of these living creatures and nurtures others sets it apart from most soil amendments. Compost is a living soil amendment. By adding compost to your soil and to your garden, you're actually giving life to that system and making it healthier overall. How many soil organisms are in each gram of soil? This might be surprising to you. There's over a billion bacteria in one gram of soil. And a gram, if you remember from elementary school, 
is a little cube about this big. So it's a very, very small amount of soil. A billion bacteria, that's crazy. There's 10 to 20 million fungi in that gram of soil. There's about a million protozoa and about 50 nematodes. That's an amazing amount of life, not even including some of the macroorganisms that might be scurrying through that one gram of soil. Compost microorganisms break down all the organic matter in your compost into plant available nutrients. Without that, plants wouldn't be able to access those things. Some bacteria convert nitrogen from the air into a plant available nutrient. This is called nitrogen fixation. That's something else that we cover in our home gardening certificate course. Compost enriched soils have a lot of beneficial insects, worms, which we know are very beneficial in a garden, and other organisms that burrow through the soil. They make little channels that keep the soil aerated, keep it from being compacted, and provide channels for water to percolate into the root zone. So that's a very good benefit. Soil bacteria and fungi nourished by compost can also help reduce the incident of a lot of disease pathogens in our gardens as well. It makes for a healthier, more robust planting system. This is also important because it can reduce the need for various pesticides and fungicides in the garden. So if you are trying to reduce your chemicals in the garden, consider adding some compost. Remember to post all your questions and results to the message board on Facebook.